Welcome back to Rise and Shine. It's good to see you. And uh, okay, well, I know I can't see you, but maybe I need to wake up. I don't know. Today we're talking about how to lead and how to wake up and lead. And what I mean by lead is is to help lead people out of darkness and into the light. We need to understand that as we accept that challenge, that we live in a world that's uh, man a very a very dark even a dangerous place. We live in times that are a little bit hard for us, okay, a lot hard for us to understand. This isn't the first time in history that God's people have lived in a hostile culture, so to speak. And even though I I do believe things will probably get more hostile toward the Christian faith, toward Jesus Christ going forward, I don't think we should lose heart. After all, in the Bible, we can read in the books of the Bible named Nehemiah, Esther, Uh, And Daniel, we can read the stories of pretty much ordinary people who lived in difficult times under, in in seasons of suffering. Uh, They were oppressed by their captors. They were fairly ordinary people who encountered some very challenging circumstances. and, And the way they stood faithful to God and gave God's wisdom in those circumstances blessed, uh, helped, changed the culture, the dark culture in which you live. In fact, you could say that any of those people, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Esther, Nehemiah, they brought light into a dark culture just by living faithfully and standing with integrity in their faith in the midst of difficult circumstances, uh, suffering even. So we look at their lives and we should take heart. But to do that, we probably need to come against some fake news, to borrow the the term that's become so popular over the last few years. There are a lot of ideas circulating among Christians today that are that are really very either immature or just downright wrong. Questions like or statements like, uh, "If God loved me, He wouldn't let difficult things into my life. I would be blessed and I'd be able to live at ease." God, I wanted God to do something for me. He didn't do what I wanted, so therefore there is no God. Those kinds of those kinds of illogical, unreasonable ideas, they're, they're everywhere, and they're not true. But there is something that is true that explains the difficulty of the situation in which we live. Let me read a passage out of Romans. Against his will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. This is a verse that kind of uh, attributes or declares, I'm going to call it Murphy's theology. You've heard of Murphy's law, right? If anything can go wrong, it will. In my family, we have a corollary. And that is, Murphy was an optimist. I don't know if you're laughing right now or not, but uh, probably not, all things considered. <laughs> The point is is that the Bible tells us that Murphy's Law is in effect because the curse is in effect. When mankind rejected the goodness and the kindness of God, the rule of God, in Genesis chapter 3, the whole earth came under a curse. That's what's wrong with the world. It's not that God doesn't love you. It's that you lived in a place, you live in a place that is cursed. Once we get our heads wrapped around that, we can begin to adjust our expectations. Now the great thing is, is that Jesus Christ died on a cross to erase the curse and those who believe in Christ are free from the curse yet they still live in a place where everything around them is cursed and so that creates a lot of the problems that you're going to experience in life is you live in a place that's actually cursed it's not a movie or a tagline it is actually cursed once we adjust our thinking to that we should be able to live with better expectations that God can bring light into this darkness, but we cannot expect to live as though we're in heaven while we're on earth. We can enjoy many of the benefits of heaven while on earth because of Jesus, but we can't expect the world to be heaven while we're here. So what does life look like here? What did life look like in Babylon for Esther, Nehemiah, and Daniel? Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It's shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Here's a few things to remember while you're living here in this world below that's filled with darkness and sadness and is under a curse. 
the first the first thing you need to remember that Paul teaches is don't don't get sucked into sin. Don't get pulled into sin. Sin brings guilt and shame. That is the reality of sin. G- God sent Jesus to to die for and to remove that guilt and shame. So as a Christian, when you do something wrong, you immediately run to God, you confess it to Him, you hand it over to Him, and He puts it on Christ, you're forgiven, the guilt and shame is gone. You could do that as many times as you need to. And God will always forgive you, and God will always erase the guilt and shame. The kingdom of darkness has a different tactic. The kingdom of darkness likes to take pride in its sin. Rather than feel the guilt and shame, they deny it, push it down, and step into a place of human pride. And and in doing so, they cover the shame. It gives a momentary reprieve, but it does not give forgiveness, and it does not set people free. So we can't get sucked into that as Christians. There's a truth that's declared in God's word and confirmed by His Holy Spirit. And that truth stands no matter what culture says or does, no matter what preachers and pulpits say or do. The Word of God is true, and the the life that it declares is the correct way to walk in, no matter how difficult it may be to actually walk in it. Our next task is is then to shine the light, the light of Jesus Christ that is within us. You know, as I look at the lives of Daniel and Nehemiah and Esther in the Old Testament, I don't see them on street corners preaching. Now, I'm not saying there's not value in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ publicly on street street corners. I have done so in the past, and I believe in certain settings it's a successful tool. But what we encounter in the Old Testament is Christians, or followers, God's people, rather, I should say, who are in dark cultures, and they the preaching in the street corner thing is not an option available to them. What is available to them is to live their ordinary lives with great faith. And then God would send opportunities, and those opportunities would usually look like persecution and suffering. We need to remember that. That when persecution and suffering come, we need a theology for that, and it's usually an opportunity that God's going to use to proclaim the goodness of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what happened to Daniel, Esther, and Nehemiah. They were given opportunities that looked a lot like persecution, in which they were faithful to God, and then they shared what God gave them through the persecution, whether it was victory over the trial, whether it was wisdom needed for the next decision, whether it was simple courage in the face of an obstinate enemy. They stood faithful. In doing so, they gave great testimony to to God, and in doing so, they brought light to the culture in which they lived. We need to do the same. We need to live brightly and faithfully to God. We need to stop making excuses for our sinfulness, our bad attitudes, our hate of other people, our dislike of other people, and we need to repent of those things and as Christians stand faithful to God who said love him first and love everyone else like you love yourself. And so we need to step into that, and by doing so, our ordinary lives can become bright. And then persecution, trial, suffering will come. In those, we stay faithful. (laughs) We hold on to God even when it doesn't make sense, and that becomes a testimony in itself. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you life. I want to encourage you and me to take courage. I don't know what's on the horizon for sure. I know that there seems to be a general trend into more darkness. As that occurs around us and in the world in which we live, it is not time for fear. It's not time for anger, which is just another way to be afraid. It is a time to be faithful to the mission. And the mission is always to lead people out of darkness and into light. It's not to fear the persecutions and suffering of a culture that may be coming at us and and doesn't like us. But rather, it's time for us to stand up and be even more faithful to our God. Be more honest with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to help people walk out of darkness and into light. That's what we're here to do. We can't lose sight of that mission. When we are awake, that is what we do. We lead people out of darkness and into light.